My name is Ravia Chaudhary. I'm an attorney and I'm an author and an advocate. Uh, I've spent about most of my career doing civil rights and federal immigration law. For the last five, six years, I've been working in wrongful convictions and I wrote a New York Times bestselling book called Adnan Story, which was then turned into an HBO series called The Case Against Adnan Sayed. So I do a lot of work trying to help free wrongfully convicted people. You know, I didn't really make choices as I went along. Um, as the landscape changed, as politics changed, as demands in my life changed, you know, things happen in our community, in my life, that suddenly I thought, this is where the need is. So I kind of allowed myself and allowed my career to go where I felt I could be of the best use. Like, where is my expertise and my skill going to be best used? And that's how my career has unfolded. Well, I certainly think that, you know, the success of the podcast Serial, which was the wrongful conviction case I've been working on for 20 years, that story they turned into a podcast, certainly did confirm my choice to approach the legal system through the media, which is, a lot of lawyers don't do that. A lot of lawyers don't want to go to media and they like to keep the legal system very closed. But I really believe that media can make a difference in the outcomes of people's cases because the legal system is very broken. So the success of that, and that has led to not just our podcast, but other podcasts helping to exonerate maybe six, seven people in the last few years. That's a big sign of success and it confirms, um, you know, the hunch I had. Yeah, you know, the, um, I have chosen to have a career that's very public. And there's no way to escape the fact that I am Asian and I'm Muslim and I wear, you know, I'm an observant Muslim, I wear a scarf. Um, and there was a time when I would have hesitated doing a lot of public work because of these reasons. And then I realized if I allow, I, those are things I cannot change. I cannot change the fact I'm Asian. And so I can either decide that that's gonna hold me back from the things I'm good at, that I love to do, or I'm not. And when I took the plunge, and it was kind of a test, you know, to see how, does society react to somebody like me talking to them about issues that all, they all care about really and you know most of people most people don't care and that was actually really confirming that you know even though there are people who have some bigotry and they have a lot of assumptions about the kind especially asian women people tend to think oh asian women are submissive and this and that um but i'm glad to be able to have to be an example of to kind of break stereotypes so you know it's um it's been really affirming and it's been a lot of young women have come to me, a lot of young girls have come to me and said thank you for being that example because it makes us feel confident that I don't have to feel shy about my identity. I can fully own my identity. People have to, people have to accept me with every part of my identity and I can still do really good work. Oh gosh, um, I have gotten inspiration from a lot of activists in criminal justice, Brian Stevenson, certainly activists like Malala and others who have faced really hard, difficult odds and kept going because at the end of the day, when you decide to be an activist or an advocate, you are always fighting a losing battle. You are always fighting against the status quo and that's hard and sometimes you might fight your whole life and not see that change. Sometimes you might just plant the seeds and, and the change comes even after you're not around and even after you've died. So uh, I find um, inspiration from, from activists who own their identity and, and tell the truth using that identity and are not um, bullied uh, by people who are critics uh, about, of them, so. Well, I would say that, you know, you never compete against anybody else. That's not the real competition. So don't ever try to be what somebody else is. Compete against yourself. Always just try to be the better version of yourself. Always check and see, do I, am I good at what I'm doing? Put in, even if you don't love what you're doing, still do your best because you will develop skills of resilience that in the hardest times will help you because there's lots of times in life we don't like what we're doing, but you just have to do it and it builds character. So the greatest advice I can give is don't ever compete against anybody else. Your journey is your journey. Your success will not look like anybody else's success. And um, just compete against yourself, just say, can I look back two years ago and say, I'm doing better, I'm happier now than I was then, I'm doing things that I wanted to do, I'm working harder, I've achieved some level of, su of success. And the other thing is don't measure success by how much fame you have, how many social media followers you have. Success is, um, are you doing what brings you satisfaction? Are you doing something that when you go to bed at night, you feel good about and you're excited about doing the very next day as well?